In this video, we'll talk about plasmid DNA isolation via the alkaline lysis method. Plasmid DNA is a really important uh, tool in molecular biology lab. People who are cloning the gene, they need to propagate the gene in a bacteria by transformation reaction. If you want to know more about transformation, video is there in the i button or description. But anyway, propagating the plasmid, amplifying the plasmid or storing the plasmid is really important. So overall, in this video, we'll try to understand how from bacterial cells one can chemically isolate the plasmid in a purified form. So there are two methods by which one can do that. There are column-based purification, which use the principle of affinity chromatography for purifying. And there is also chemical purification, which use fundamental uh, chemical-based approach to purify the plasmid. Obviously, you can understand the first one is kit-based and customized, so this is more costly, whereas the second chemical purification or alkaline lysis is an inexpensive method. It's very cheap, but very efficient. So in this alkaline lysis method, you start with solution number one. In a moment, I'll tell you the composition, but you first resuspend the bacterial uh, cells by <coughs> resuspension buffer. In the resuspension buffer, you have TRIS EDTA. EDTA is very important because, because it chelates divalent metal ions such as calcium and magnesium, which are also uh, important for DNases. So by chelating these divalent ions, you can also chelate DNAs activity. Also, um, if you remove these calcium and magnesium, it would destabilize the membranes as well. Glucose is also added in this solution to maintain the osmolarity and ensures the cells doesn't prematurely burst. So overall, the resuspension buffer has a composition like this. So in order to prepare 100 ml of resuspension buffer or solution 1, you need to add all these components, glucose, TRIS-CL, EDTA, water, and have to adjust the volume till 100 ml. Then the important part is the alkaline lysis. In order to take the plasmid out of the cell, you have to lyse the cell to take out the plasmid. And this lysis step is performed by solution number two. This solution number two can be imagined as a lysis buffer, which contains sodium hydroxide and SDS. So obviously by presence of sodium hydroxide, you can understand this particular solution is highly alkaline. And that gives us the name, the alkaline lysis. Anyway, the alkaline lysis step is performed by solution 2 whose composition is exactly mentioned here. But I'll tell you what exactly happens after putting the alkaline lysis solution, the solution 2, you mix it gently and wait a little bit of time such that the lysis can happen. In this step, first of all, NaOH loosens up the cell wall, SDS pops hole in the membrane and that releases the overall chromosome of bacteria and also the plasmid DNA in the solution. Now also the DNA gets denatured because all the interaction between the uh, DNAs, the base pairs, the hydrogen bonds are now disrupted because there is an alteration in pH in the solution, right? And this is not favorable for hydrogen bond formation because it is highly alkaline. So DNA gets denatured. At a particular point of time, if you take it um, take the solution and open the tube, you would see strand-like appearances coming out of the tube. Now the next step is neutralization. This extremely alkaline environment has to be neutralized. And this neutralization is done by potassium acetate and acetic acid. Obviously by putting acid, you can neutralize the base. So it forms a salt known as potassium dodicyl sulfide, sulfate with the SDS which is present in the uh, alkaline lysis solution and this is an insoluble salt. So after putting this solution 3 what happens is you see cardi precipitated like stuff appearing in the tube which are highly insoluble you can visually see them. So then you wait some time and then centrifuge them. Now once you add the neutralization buffer the waiting is important because you want to wait for precisely the time that would allow the circular DNA or the plasmid to renature, but it doesn't give enough time for the denatured 
cellular DNA or the chromosomal DNA to renature. So you have to ensure that, okay, renaturation happens only for the plasmid DNA. So the timing is critical in this step. After that, one should, one should centrifuge them and precipitate these insoluble uh, substances, the salt of uh, dodicyl sulfate. So after that, what happens? The aqueous portion is taken out and along with this aqua aqueous portion, 0.6 volume of isopropanol is added to precipitate the plasmid DNA which we which is supposed to be in this solution. Now isopropanol makes the DNA unhappy. So isopropanol first uh, forms bonds with the DNA. DNA doesn't interact with the water so it's not anymore solubilized. It's now precipitated. After ultimately it forms a pellet after isoprecipi isopropanol precipitation. And this pellet can be washed again by uh, ethanol uh, washing. So ethanol is added, the precipitation is again done. So ultimately, after that, the pellet is dried and resuspended in nucleus free water or let's say some trace buffer. This plasmid one, once isolated can be stored in minus 80 or minus 20 degrees centigrade for years. Now, how do you know the plasmid is good quality that you have isolated? So you can run those plasmid in a gel and it should show you several bands. I mean, there are many outcomes possible like bands correspond to nicked plasmid, linear plasmid, super coiled or circular, uh, uh, closed circular plasmid. The predominant form that you should be expecting is basically the super coiled one. And that's why you should be getting the thickest band in the super coiled region and other bands should be very faint. Anyway, you can also check the quantity of plasmid that how much is the yield of this isolation process. So one can put a one microliter plasmid there and ultimately one can check the absorbance at 260 by 280 nanometer. It should come around like more than 500 nanograms per microliter for a good yield and A260 280 ratio should be 1.8 for a pure DNA. If this ratio is not proper, then there could be a problem or contamination in your plasmid DNA. By looking at these parameters, you can understand how good the isolation is. You can find more flashcards and notes in my Facebook, Facebook page and you can find more notes in Instagram page. Anyway, you can uh, support the channel via super thanks. You can use Paytm, PayPal or UPI for paying. See you in next video.